In this video, I want to talk about diesel engine pre-chambers and problems associated with them. Uh, pre-chambers like I'm going to show you here were on these Mercedes diesel engines from the 50s up until the late 1990s. So the pre-chamber was developed primarily to reduce sound, reduce some of the knocking sound that's associated with a diesel engine. And you're looking at two types here. This is the old um, non-turbo. It's got a flat end and the holes are all coming out the side. And then this is a turbo diesel. This is out of 617 turbo. And you notice it's rounded on the end and the holes are kind of located in a couple of different locations as they round over the edge. So um, what happens, you can see there, here, here's the fuel injector, okay? And for those of you who don't need a, a better reference to where these pre-chambers lo are located, they go down in the cylinder head. The fuel injector, of course, screws right in here. And when fuel is squirted into the engine, it enters the pre-chamber before it enter, enters the combustion chamber. There's actually a little ball, a little ball located right here. So when the fuel is squirted, it hits the ball and disperses. The purpose of this is to increase atomization. The burn starts, and then as the burn continues, it moves out through these holes into the cylinder for, for maximum combustion. So this is all happening very quickly, by the way. I'm kind of explaining in, in, in very slow motion. So as long as the pre-chamber is working properly and not damaged, uh, they, they are very efficient. They're, they're very fuel efficient. Uh, they allow that quieter sound, reducing some engine knock, and they're also a very good way to start the engine because the glow plug, the glow plug comes right in the side here of this pre-chamber. So it heats, it heats up the pre-chamber. It doesn't heat up the cylinder. So when you get that initial startup when the engine's cold, you get, you get it to fire quickly because of the efficiency of the pre-chamber. But like a number of things on these older Mercedes diesel engines, as they age, and let me tell you, some of these are getting pretty old. You know, they're cranking up four or five, 600,000 miles. And if you start having problems with the pre-chambers, uh, they can be kind of uh, hard to, diagnose, okay, because a lot of people don't even know that you could have a problem with the pre-chamber. Pre and also the problem with the nut, this is called the collar nut, which tightens the pre-chamber down in the head. So I'm going to show you up close some of the issues you might have with these pre-chambers, and then I'm going to show you the tool that you will need to deal with it. I need to clarify something about these two different style uh, pre-chambers. I mentioned this was non-turbo and this was turbo. Uh, that's true in a, in a sense, but not totally. This is actually the pre-chamber that uses the series or loop style glow plug. Notice the hole, see how much bigger the hole is? And this is the pre-chamber that uses the pencil or the pointed style glow plug. Because once again, the glow plugs go right through that hole there, right inside the pre-chamber. So um, this was used up till 1979 through 1979 on the uh, non-turbo models. This, this showed up in the, in the 1978 uh, 300 SD in the US market, the, the 617 turbo diesel. But this was also used in the, in the 240Ds and the non-turbo 300Ds uh, from 1980 on. But one of the reasons you may need to remove this pre-chamber is you may break a glow plug off. I've seen this happen uh, a number of times. We've heard from our customers, you know, what do I do if I break the end of a glow plug off? Um, this can be really tough because if part of the glow plug is still sticking out and you remove the pre-chamber, you're gonna ruin the pre-chamber. The glow plug tip may actually score this part of the pre-chamber. But in some cases, you don't have an option. You need, to get, you need to get that pre-chamber out and get the, the whatever piece of glow plug um, has been left behind and you may be prepared to have to have another uh, pre-chamber on hand. The other reason that you may need to remove these is this little ball. There's a pin, you can see the pin there. This ball is on a pin and that ball, once I said earlier, is what spreads uh, the flame or the fuel spray pattern. These balls have been known to come loose, break off. You may get some weird rattling noises in your engine that you can't isolate. 
Uh, this is very hard to see, but you can pull, I, it won't show up in this video, but you can pull your fuel injector and you can get down there with a really strong light and you can see that ball down in there. And if you don't see a ball in there, then <laughs> you're going to have to uh, pull these and, and replace it. I've, I've known a couple situations where that ball has come loose inside the pre-chamber and it's just beat around in there and finally disintegrated and worked its way through these small holes. And what happens is any contamination, either a broken tip on a glow plug or a broken ball that's flying around it, and then let me tell you, it's going to be, you're talking 400 PSI here, and it's going to be flying around in this pre-chamber, and eventually the little pieces will work down in here and they can damage these holes. And when these holes get damaged, you'll have really difficult to diagnose inconsistencies in the way the engine runs and how smooth it runs. And those, those problems are really hard. These holes can burn if the timing, the injection timing is not right and the engine is running or firing or is injecting the fuel too soon. You could have a problem with driving a, a car with a consistently overheated engine. And I've seen these pre-chambers come out where these holes are burnt and enlarged. They're critical, the diameter is critical for complete and even combustion. So I'm going to warn you, uh, you, you really can't inspect these unless you pull them, but if you've got an old diesel engine, you've done everything. You've got good compression, you've got, you know you've got proper firing, your injection pump is okay, and you're still having problems with the way it runs. Uh, this is kind of the last resort. You may have to pull these pre-chambers and see what they look like. So uh, the other problem you run into with these pre-chambers is you see the collar nut tightens this down into the head and the fuel injector actually screws into the collar nut. See that? The fuel injector does not screw into the pre-chamber. So what I found is if people over torque their fuel injectors and then back them out and over torque them again and back them out or take them out, this collar nut will start to loosen up. I think that's the number one reason why these collar nuts loosen up is because people are over torquing these fuel injectors. And what happens when this collar nut starts to loosen up, there's a seal right here, you'll get bubbling. So you'll get bubbling and little fuel coming out around the outer uh, threads of this collar nut. And the only way, sometimes you can just tighten this up and it'll solve the leak. Other times you have to pull it out and get a new washer. So what we did is, is we, we said with all these problems, we've got to come up with a good tool that will tighten and loosen the collar nut and remove the pre-chamber. And this is the tool that we sell right here. This is the collar nut tool. Uh, it works um, like this. You know, it's a multi-element uh, multi tool. This part, you know, screws down into the pre-chamber. And that's going to hold the collar nut, uh, the tool up tight against the collar nut. And you can see here how this has to be machined to fit right in these two notches. It has to fit perfectly. Because if there's any slop and it doesn't go all the way down in the groove, you're going to round these edges out. So this goes uh, like that. And then you put the nut on here like this. And then you see you've got the ability now to, to loosen up or tighten the collar nut. And you may be thinking, well, why do you need to tighten down? Well, this is on there so hard, there's no way that you can turn this without having some force holding it tight against those two notches in that collar nut. So we also have a slide hammer attachment. Uh, that uh, we, we sell a slide hammer where we take this piece and we weld it on to the end of the slide hammer uh, fitting and you use a slide hammer, you know, to pull this out of the head. I have other videos on, on YouTube that talk about, show the demonstration with a slide hammer and how to get these out, and I'll put links to those. But I just wanted it in this video to really talk about some of the problems that you may have with the collar nut and these two pre-chambers. If you're, if you're interested, uh, I've also done another video, but I'll put this at the end of this video. If you're interested in seeing how we make this or what goes, what's involved in making this tool here in our shop, then I'll, I'll just put that at the end of this video. If you've already seen that, then you don't have to see it. But if you're having problems 
with your pre-chambers. Uh, these are getting the, these old style, loop style pre-chambers I don't think are available. We still have uh, some of these new, but we do have these used on my website. We have used collar nets, good used collar nets on my website. And of course we have both the slide hammer and the collar nut tool available. I'll put links in the show more description to all these products that I've discussed here in this video. So I hope this helps and you can solve some of your own pre-chamber problems. So I remember the first time I took one of these collar nuts out, I tried to rig up some sort of a tool, a spreader tool. <laughs> and then I realized this is in there with well over 100 foot pounds of torque. And I can remember, uh, I was so frustrated I had to get one of these out that I used a punch. And I got, them, I got a punch on here and literally, you know, got it out, but literally destroyed the collar, the collar nut. So the challenge was to come up with a tool that could tighten this collar nut and then remove the pre-chamber. The only way the pre-chamber can be removed is to pull it out of the head with a slide hammer. So I went to work. We started thinking about, okay, what do we do? Let's start out with this, coming up with a tool for the collar nut. So I knew it had to be really, really tough steel. So enter a large, heavy-duty impact socket very strong steel. So how am I going to machine this so it will fit down in these notches in the collar nut? So then we had to go to work on a CNC machine to machine out this socket. And this is what it looks like after it's been machined. But the problem here is, see, those are straight cuts and it doesn't fit down tight. You've got to have that, these two notches fit down in here at an angle and be real tight on there. So, um, okay, that took the next operation. So we had to grind. We had to machine an angle in these two notches and now this fits down in very tightly. See that? Fits down into that collar nut because if it doesn't fit all the way down in there, you're gonna turn this and it's gonna break off these, these edges of the tabs. And then the next operation, of course, was to weld a large nut on here so you could get a wrench on there and turn it, okay? But you had to have some way to hold this tight because if you just stuck this on here and tried to turn this with a socket, it would just slip right out. So enter the next phase where we had to come up with an adapter that would screw in to the pre-chamber like this. And then you slip the collar nut tool on, on over the top. Let's say here's your, here's your collar nut, okay. Slip this on over the top like that. And then taking this nut and tightening this down, what this would do is it would keep the tool tight, keep the tool tight on the collar nut while you took a wrench or a large socket and began to turn it. And of course, as you turn it a little bit, it doesn't take much to break it loose and then it comes out, but you can adjust the tightness by tightening and loosening this nut here. So uh, we, we found out very quickly, well, we could modify this one tool to get the pre-chamber out by welding this on to the end of a slide hammer. So using this same threaded tool that we use for the collar nut tightening and loosening, we ended up providing adapter welding it on to a slide, two pound slide hammer and then you hook this up with a slide hammer and slide it off this way. So this is a, a really good example of an evolution of a tool that we make here at Mercedes Source. And like I say, this is one of the more complicated ones that we do here. It has the most steps and is probably the most expensive to produce.